Hey everyone, Kevin P. McAuliffe here, and I am back again with another Creative Cow tutorial. And in our ongoing look at learning Avid's Media Composer and Symphony, I thought in this lesson we would take a look at some more advanced compositing techniques. And though probably the most advanced technique I'm going to show you is the chroma key. It's the dreaded effect that no one ever wants to do. Why? Because it's always either shot very poorly or you always have issues in the edit suite or there's always something wrong with the chroma key. Well in this tutorial I want to show you how you can take a, an element that's pretty compressed and create a very very nice key from it without having to leave the comfort of your non-linear editing application. Now, one thing I do want to point out before we get into this tutorial is that I took a clip from one of my favorite sites to practice with with free footage, and that is hollywoodcamerawork.us slash greenscreenplates.html. If you don't know about this site or not familiar with it, it's a fantastic site to come in and get some great training footage that you can play around with to use whether you're doing it inside a compositing application or nonlinear editing application but this site is a fantastic way to get some free elements you can get in and practice with them before you actually get into the edit suite and have to work with a client so I want to give a big shout out to these guys because I'm a huge fan of having these great free elements to work with now what's also important to keep in mind is that you know they're free the file sizes aren't big but it also means that the footage is very compressed and especially when you're doing an effect like chroma key that can be a huge problem but we're going to get into media composer and symphony like i said i'm going to show you how simple it's going to be to do using the fantastic spectromat effect okay so let's alt tab into symphony obviously command and tab for all of my mac friends out there and obviously for a chroma key we need two elements we need a foreground element and a background element now for my background element, I have a picture of the beach here. Now as you can see, it's not full 16 by 9, but that's okay for the purposes of what we're doing. We're going to reposition our uh, talent, our Godiva, our Lady Godiva, as she's uh, sort of affectionately called. And we're going to put her here on the beach. We're going to shrink her down a bit and position her where we're going to want her to go. Now like I said, we do have our Lady Godiva. Here she is with her, I guess that's a shawl, sort of blowing in the breeze. And we're going to want to need to create a pretty good mat with this. And obviously crop out the fan. We don't want any of that. We don't want any of this other green screen here or anything like that. So that's going to sort of impede in sort of the edges here. And it's actually very easy to do. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my stock footage shot here. I'm just going to take it. I'm going to drop it onto video layer 1. I'm going to press Control and Y on Windows, Command and Y on the Mac to create a new video layer. And I'm just going to take our Lady Godiva shot here, hit T on the keyboard on both Mac and Windows to select the entire clip. I'm going to come back to the beginning. I'm going to mark an in point on my timeline by hitting I on both Mac and Windows. And let's edit this shot in. Now we obviously don't need the beach to go any farther than the duration of that shot. Very nice. And what we're going to do now is hit Control and 8 on Windows, Command and 8 from my Mac friends out there. And we're going to want to come all the way down to the mat section here. Where are we here? It's actually the key section, pardon me, not the mat section, because inside of there we have obviously our mat key effect. But the effect that we want to work with right now is spectromat. So here's spectromat right here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take it and I'm going to drag it right over here onto the Lady Godiva shot. Now as soon as I do, you can start to see through to see the beach beneath her. There we go. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to solo this track because I don't want to see any of the beach until I'm actually ready to place her where I'm going to want her to go. Now you're also going to see that right now I'm sort of seeing black through her dress and part of her shawl now. And the reason being, I'm just going to step into effects mode on the keyboard. As you all I know are familiar with, the shortcut on my keyboard for effects mode is Shift and Y. If you don't have it mapped, you can always find it right here at the bottom of the composer window, right over here at the top of the timeline. So Shift and Y. And you'll see that I'm now brought, and I'm just going to zoom back here just to show the entire shot of Our Lady Godiva here. I have this very interesting sort of spectrum of colors here. And I have our shot. And what is actually going on here? You'll see the very first thing that we're, we're asked is, what is the key color? And blue is the key color. And of course, her dress is that same, well, not the same, but a pretty close blue color to that color that we want to key. So the first thing we're going to want to do before we start working is change that color. I know that green is going to be the color that we're going to want to work with. So what I'm going to do is just grab that eyedropper, keep it held down. I'm going to drag over right to about here, I think, and let go. Now, as soon as I let go, you know, we've got a half-decent key going on here, but we still got a lot of green inside of her shawl that we're going to want to get rid of. Now, the other problem that I have right now is that I can't actually see what's going on with the mat. Now, what most people think is the best way to get in and use the mat is to be constantly turning on and off the show alpha parameter. 
But for me, that's not how I like to work with Spectromat. What I like to do is I actually like to come down to Spectromat or Spectrograph in Source Window or Source Monitor. I'm just going to switch that over to be Alpha. Very nice. Now, right now, my main concern is the shawl because her key is looking half decent. We've got a bit of reflection going on, but what I would actually encourage you to do in a situation like this, if you want to get rid of all the green from her dress, you can actually go in and color correct the shot first before you do any chroma keying or anything like that. But for right now, I'm just going to play with what I have. So the first thing I'm going to do so I'm just going to come down. I'm going to adjust the tolerance here. Now you'll see that by adjusting the tolerance, as soon as I let go, we now have a lot more of the shawl that we can see through. What I'm going to do here is just undo what I just did to put it back at the way it was before at about 90. There we go. Let's just make sure I'm viewing the right layer here. We're going to solo that. So this is what we were sort of looking like before. And what I'm going to do is just bring it up a little bit here to about 102. Now you'll see as, as, as I start bringing it up, we start to get a little bit more transparent in that shawl, which is really what we want. And that's not looking too bad there. The only issue I have is that the uh, shawl sort of here is not looking that great. And what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to adjust the key saturation line here. I'm just going to drag that up a little bit here. And as I drag up, I'm going to let go. And you'll see that we start to get some information back in here. But it's a little bit too much. And it's sort of a, you have to kind of find the happy medium here. And what we're going to do is just come out a little bit more. And that's not overly too bad. Now I think... I need to see through a little bit more of the shawl, but what I'm going to do here is just zoom in on my Lady Godiva and see what's going on here, just nice and close up. Now that's actually not looking too bad. You'll see that we can see through the shawl there. We can see through it here. Very nice. Now what we also have the ability to do is get in and adjust inner and outer softness. We can come in and adjust some luma controls. Now in most cases, what you're going to be doing inside of this effect is you're going to be doing things like matte processing. Now I'm going to show you the matte processing actually when we put uh, our talent onto the beach because there's a very cool effect that you can create uh, almost to create it like that she's a spirit. Uh, a very interesting sort of, I wouldn't even call it a trick, but just a little thing that you can do inside of the actual effect itself by simply using the matte processing parameters. Now as I zoom back here, let's just take a look and see what's going on here. It's a little bit obviously hard to tell because we've still got some color going on here. So let's crop out all this junk that we have here and here that we're not going to need. So what I'm going to do is just come right down to the bottom. I'm just going to grab the right side here. We're just going to crop this right off like that. Now what I'm also going to do is I'm going to crop the bottom off as well. And what I need to see here, I'm just going to zoom in by hitting the plus on the magnifying glass. I'm going to hold Control and Alt, Command and Option for my Mac friends. I'm just going to come down here just to make sure that we can't see that sort of edge that we've created. I was just sort of leaning my head over so I had a better sort of straight on view uh, of the screen here. And I think we're doing okay. We're really going to see this when we drop it onto the beach. Now what I'm going to do is just zoom back here just like such because we obviously got this little bit of garbage we want to get rid of as well from the left side. Very nice. Okay, and here's our, our Lady Godiva and we're ready to place her on the beach. And one thing I actually like and, and it almost sort of comes across as a mistake when you're actually doing the the key itself, but it's something I like to leave and you'll see in most cases people would think that this right here between her legs would be a mistake and it wouldn't be something that we want. Well, believe it or not, it's actually going to help us because in most cases, this looks like a shadow. And if someone's standing out at the beach at noon, where would their shadow be? It would be directly below them. So what we're going to do is we're just going to place her. Like I said, we're going to shrink her down a little bit first. I'm just going to set the uh, scaling to be, I don't know, maybe about 90. No, maybe even a little bit less. Maybe we'll make it about 80. Perfect. What I'm going to do now is again hold Control and Windows Command on the Mac just to turn off solo. And you'll see there's our Lady Godiva. And you'll see she's got her shadow right down there. And what I'm going to do is just position her kind of right about there. You'll see a keyframe was added, but I'm just going to remove that. And what I'm going to do is just step out of effects mode here for a second. I'm just going to hit play. And you'll see that even as her shawl, and what I should do here is I should zoom in. Just so you can see what's going on here. Let's just zoom in a couple times. There we go. Control and Alt and Windows Command Option on the Mac. Like I said, you can see a little bit of green here on her dress, but there's not much. That really doesn't affect the key. Uh, per se, you'd want to get in and, like I said, color correct this before we actually do the um, before we actually do the chroma key. Now you'll see that we can see that hard line going right across there. And how we're going to get in and adjust that, you'll see here is our our mat. What we're going to do is just play around a bit with the tolerance. I'm just going to drag that, drag it all the way. Not going to do what we wanted to do. There we go. Let's back off a little bit on the key saturation line just like that. We don't want to back off too much. 
because we can start to see through her dress. So I think we're okay there. There we go. Now the other thing that's important to keep in mind, and you can actually see this in here, like I said, this this footage is ridiculously compressed. You probably would never run into compression like this in the field. And I mean, I've seen sort of all all levels of compression. And this is pretty horrible, but then again, guess what? I mean, the footage is all free. It was obviously provided to, you know, at small, uh, small file sizes to get the footage downloaded quick so you can use. Um, so keep that in mind, but like I said, you know, even still, this is a fantastic key that we've just created. Inside a Media Composer in Symphony, didn't even need to leave our editing interface. Now, what I want to do is I want to show this to you. I'm just going to zoom back here for a second. I'm just going to hit minus on my little uh, my little magnifying glass. So there's Our Lady Godiva. And the great thing with this effect, again, is if I come back to the beginning, it's actually real time. You'll see we can see right through the shawl, which looks really great. Got the shadow there. This actually looks like it could conceivably be, you know, sort of shot on one of those virtual sets. But what if I wanted to make our talent almost seem like she was a bit of, of an angel, sort of with the, the very soft edges? How would we get in and apply that effect? Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to step back into the effect, shift and Y on the keyboard. And like I mentioned before, I'm going to come down to matte processing. You're going to see we have a couple options inside of matte processing as far as the blur goes. We can erode, we can blur, or we can dilate. I'm just going to leave it on erode, believe it or not. I'm just going to grab that matte blur and just drag it way out and take a look at what we have now. We now have our Lady Godiva almost looking like a ghost. Take a look at that. A very different effect that we've just created. I'll just zoom in a little bit. Now, obviously, we can see through her, but this beats having to do it as a, you know, just taking it and sort of putting it at 50% transparency because what's happening is, is it's eroding the edges of the mat. So in the middle, she's still uh, relatively, I guess if you want to say, you know, it's, it's still a very solid key. It's just on the edges that it's been eroded. And you see that we've gone from it being sort of a more realistic shot to be to almost be more of sort of like a heavenly shot. It's more of like a ghost on a beach, which is a very cool way to create a very different look for the same shot. Very nice. Like I said, I just love the fact that with Spectrum Matte we created that awesome key and this was going to be the worst part of it, her shawl. Someone can email me and tell me if that's not actually a shawl or if you'd call it something else. I'm just going to call it a shawl because I think that's probably fine. Uh, but like I said, Looking very nice. What I'm going to do is just, I'm just going to take that off for a second here. We'll take a look at this one more time and take a look at that. Like I said, it almost looks like she's on a virtual set. That looks awesome. And it was also very quick to do. Okay, now of course the big question is why when creating this key did I use Spectromat and not just use the standard RGB key? Or well, let me show you. What I'm going to do here is I'm just going to add an edit right about here, I think. And I'm going to remove this effect by hitting F5 on the keyboard, my shortcut, obviously, for remove effect. If you don't have it mapped, no worries. You can always find it right here at the top of your timeline. What I'm going to do is I'm going to come back to the effects palette. I'm going to grab that RGB key, and we're just going to drag it over here, and I'm going to drop it down onto the shot. What we're going to do is step into effects mode here, and you'll see the very first thing again, much like with Spectromat, the very first option we have is what color key do we want to do? Now you remember how well the key looked after just clicking on the green. So what I'm going to do, you would think, is just click right here and get sort of the same type of effect. But you'll see it's not even in the same league. Take a look. I'm just going to isolate the channel. Take a look at all that green. And if we come back here, you'll see that as the shawl moves, that green doesn't go anywhere. Definitely not like that. Huge, huge, huge difference. The other big difference here, you'll see if I come back in here, is I don't have any control over position or scale or crop from within the effect. So there's really, I mean, there's obviously some ways that I can remove this, but not, not really an easy way. Whereas with Spectromat, I have all those tools right at my disposal, right within the effect, to not only create a fantastic looking key, but to get in to manipulate the elements to put them wherever I need to put them inside of my composite. So if you have any questions, you have any comments, or you have any tutorial requests, you can send them to Kevin P. McAuliffe at gmail.com. This has been Kevin P. McAuliffe. Thanks a lot for watching.